All right. Thanks, Nick. Um, so we're going to focus on uh, Zoom, but in ways that have to do with delivering, uh, I guess kind of the old term for it is lecture material, but slides, uh, how to do this in a classroom. Um, and I'll, I'll say though, uh, something that I mentioned uh, in a meeting earlier this week, Oop, wrong. So this slide is a reminder that if what you actually are going to be doing is making uh, like recordings of your lectures that you just want to record and set on Canvas for students to use, rather than teaching, I'll just call it face to face like we are now, I would recommend the uh, screencast option. And this is another thing you have, it's easy to use, it's available through ASU, it's not complicated. But I have that information on the left there in terms of what this is particularly good for as opposed to using Zoom, even though in theory you could pretty much do similar things in Zoom, I would opt for the screencast. So, uh, you know, you may not be at this point now, but at some point you may want to edit something that you've recorded. You may want to go between uh, different types of screens, maybe a video, and then moving to this. And I'll show you how to do that here too. But if you just want to record it, set it in Canvas for students to view whenever, Screencast is uh, a better option. And it isn't hard to use. And I just want to put that out there because we're all using these things in different ways. So first of all, any questions about that or what I'm talking about in terms of the difference? No, that sounds good. I know you talked about um, screencast before and um, I checked it out and it does look pretty easy to use. So yeah, and also it's something where, you know, there are professors who like have a YouTube channel that they're using for their various classes or for other purposes. And Screencast allows you to, you know, to save it there directly. Um, you know, if you make a mistake, say too many ums, realize you gave the wrong information in a different, or the information in the wrong order, you can go back and uh, edit things too. And it's not hard to do, but just a heads up on that. So what I'm gonna be uh, looking at particularly is, if you're using Zoom to do, you know, uh, the current version of a face-to-face -face class presentation where you have students in the Zoom room with you and now you want to give information other than just staring at them and, you know, lecturing, uh, you know, face-to-face. -face. So this is, I'm gearing this more towards live lectures. That said, you can totally record uh, just as Nick is right now for us you can record uh, any of your meetings. So notice on that uh, slide that uh, on the right there, not only at the bottom of Zoom uh, where your, uh, the record button is, but if you click on the, the little arrow there, the first thing that's going to come up is something that is going to ask you where you're wanting to record this. So just a note there, and again, you can kind of, I want to say, play around with that, but just know that if you are planning on recording that, um, there are ways in your Zoom account to set up default settings. Do you want it to start recording as soon as uh, you open it? Do you want to do like Nick did, which is start the recording when you decide you want to start the recording, things like that. So just to know that there are ways to do that uh, as well. So in terms of this, um, I'm going to start with screen share, which is what I'm doing now. Uh, but I'm going to take you through what this looks like in Zoom. And again, if you do have another Zoom room up, you'll be able to see that, but not uh, necessary as well. So at the bottom of your, uh, and I, I say at the bottom, you can adjust the little um, table, the Zoom table to be either at the top or the bottom. And, uh, I, but I'm gonna refer to it as though it's on the bottom of the uh, screen here. So uh, you will see the green button, the screen share uh, button. And once you've clicked on that, there are some other options there. If you want to, you know, you've got a class and maybe you're going to have students that are giving uh, a short presentation. They too can screen share. 
but you can set it up so that only one participant is doing that at a time uh, and you know take it from there. So I'm not gonna go into all of those details for this uh, sort of basic one, but just know that they're there. Uh, so if you did click on that, this is what at least at one point uh, early this morning, uh, these would be the options that would have popped up that are on my screen. So notice, you know, you may have different PowerPoints up you're working on, you may have files, you may have um, your uh, Chrome up, you know, websites, whatever. And then also, because I'll come back to this, notice the whiteboard there. I'm gonna come back and talk about that, but just notice that when you go into screen share, um, you'll see whiteboard and some of those other iPhone options. I'm not gonna to touch on those today, or at least as part of this formal part, but anything that's on your screen will be visible. So I'm going to use as an example here, uh, some slides that I might be working on or wanna show in class. So this is what, once I've selected that, double clicked on it or clicked on it and hit share, I would be seeing this set of PowerPoints. So as you, as I notice, as I note here, uh, above that area, you'll always going to be able to uh, stop the share. You'll see the little red stop share. So if either you pulled up the wrong thing or now you wanna come back and talk to your students face to face or you want to move to a website because you're going to show a video, whatever it is, you can always stop the share and then you just um, click on share to show something else as well. But then let's say you want to take, have it fill the screen. They don't need to be seeing the extras on the side. Uh, it will do that just like it would in the classroom where uh, when you set it up in the, you know, for a presentation, that's all they'd see. So in this case, uh, some notes there too, in terms of uh, you're always going to be able to access the little thumbnails of the uh, students. Uh, I know that it can really be useful to have, to see students' faces. The reality is, first of all, that it takes some connectivity challenge or some students have connectivity challenges, computer challenges, and I'm not making my students stay with me face to face like we are now. I'm allowing them to mute their video. That said, when you are in presentation mode or screen share mode, you're not going to be able to see all your students at once anyway. You can kind of tell just in our screen now, you might be able to see a few, but not all. So just be aware of that uh, and that they will still be able to see, you know, your lovely face uh, while this is going on. Um, some tips or reminders. Don't mute yourself. Uh, realize your computer is what they're seeing, uh, even especially if you're going to show film, run a video. Uh, you can't mute yourself because that's linked into then muting the uh, screen share. Um, also, a little tip that Nick helped me figure it out. I had a film uh, that wasn't available in streaming and that I was just going to use as a DVD in, a, in my computer. And it, as Zoom has its preferences. So should you ever be in that situation, uh, it prefers the VLC showing uh, option there. It won't necessarily automatically show even though you might be able to watch it differently on your own uh, screen. So um, if you're someone who, because of the way this is set up and you're sharing your screen, you can't really have it in presentation mode where you might be able to see the upcoming slides, the next one right you know, up there as well as some of us are used to working. If maybe you're someone that's got 20 slides, but you're actually only gonna focus on 10 of them, uh, and you don't necessarily wanna be flipping through them. Uh, I personally recommend that you have a, a computer on the side and sort of where you can keep track of where you are, but just notice that you are a bit limited here because it's not being projected somewhere else. What's on your screen is what they're going to uh, see. Um, also, for example, on this one here, I have a link and that takes me to a video uh, and normally in the classroom, I could just click on the link and the, the um, uh, internet uh, uh, 
page becomes visible and I can start playing it. On screen share, what you're still going to have on the screen share is, in this case, the PowerPoint. So that's when I would recommend you stop share and then already have whatever web pages you might use set up so you can just go directly to it. You could still click on your link. You're just going to have to come out of your screen share or, or set it up where you're going to now share a different page. So first of all, questions about that? I know this is a lot of material, but hopefully over time it starts to layer on each other. Well, I've got a, a couple of questions that are not necessary. I've got a class of about 40, 42, and all I see is the five or six that like we're seeing now. How, and I know that you can, at least I understand that you can get at least 20 people on there. Yes. So when you, yeah. Yeah. So when you first go into um, your uh, Zoom, uh -huh. uh, as people start, when it's just you, you only have one option, you're it. But as people start entering the room, you're going to see like at the top of our little string right now of, of, of us, you're going to see there's a little minimize, there's a square, there's a double. The other option when there are more is uh, sort of like the thumbnail version. And if you click on that, they'll just keep populating until you get, I think it's at least 20 on a screen. And then it'll also, if you've got more than 20, there'll be a little arrow where you basically click onto page two. So you can toggle back and forth. Uh, one of my recommendations for Zoom is that they figure out a way for us to be able to have more if even if smaller uh thumbnails mm -hmm. on the screen so there is just look for it it looks like a little grid we just don't have enough people here um that it may be showing up quite that way but that's it would be, as i as i read pamela i'm just going to go through this as i hover over it it's hide thumbnail video and then the next one is show active speaker video and the next one is show thumbnail video and the next no, one is you yeah. don't even need to do that. It's, um, I'm going to stop the share a minute and just, uh, so right up above is, as you're now looking at a screen and there are five of us here, mm -hmm. notice in the upper right, it'll say speaker view. Okay. Or it'll say, uh, it'll show that little set of boxes that's quote gallery view. Yeah. So speaker view, I'm seeing you and then the rest of us are along the top. If you click on gallery view, you get all of us. Okay. Do you see that? I have all of you now, but I'll have whoever signed in. Yes. Yeah, so point. as students start populating, those will just keep, you know, you'll get more and more and more of them. So we only have five, but ultimately, yes, you can get, I think it is 20, might be more than that. Nick might re remember. And then what you would see is, um, let's say you have more than two, one page of pictures. Yeah. Then you'd see a little arrow where you could just, it'll tell you like page one of two. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Great. Thank so, you. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so let me go back to screen share here. So again, uh, if you want to click on the next slide, you can just click your, you know, your space button, or you can actually click on the screen uh, either way. Okay. Oh. okay. Would you mind going back? Sure. To the the the, um, the screen share where you showed all those icons of where of what you're looking at when you first come on. Yes, let me. You're, uh, you're, I've got you know your your Facebook. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, let's. Could you? Could we just? Would you mind just running through those? So desktop one is the one I'm looking at right now. Yes. So what that would just be where your your you know, where your Zoom is or whatever you're on. The whiteboard, yeah. I'll get to, okay? I, I'm going to okay, bring that gotcha. up. That's where you but can write I've, on it and stuff. iPhone, um, iPad, by AirPlay, yeah. is that anything? Those are various things you can use that basically can plug into Zoom, um, even though they're not literally, I want to say, on your desktop, especially for people using iPhones to do this. I'm mm -hmm. not going to cover those and probably you wouldn't have to deal with those, good. but okay. the, those are default options that are going to show up. Okay. okay? Good. Then you've, any, you've got your PowerPoint. Your, go ahead. You've got your PowerPoint presentation as a separate icon. So I could, if I wanted to go to my PowerPoint, I would just 
click on that. Yeah, and so I up. happen to have two, a bunch of stuff up and I, I just did that in order to create an image. So you see that anything that's up on your screen, that's open on your screen, they'll, it's gonna give you those options. Fantastic. And you just pick, so I can't actually do it because it's a screenshot. Yeah. But I would double click on this one if that's what I want, or you can just click it once it's highlighted and then you go down to share. That helps a lot. I, yeah, what sure. I've been doing is, is uh, coming in ahead of time, setting them all up, dropping them down on that middle, you know, the um, whatever right. color it is, the green, the, the yellow, mm -hmm. and putting them down below and then calling them up. But I can actually do that right here, can't I? Yes, if they're just up there. Um, now, if they're totally minimized where you can't see them on the screen because they're down, you know, in the, in the thing at the bottom, those wouldn't be visible. These are just things other than the whiteboard and the iPhone, iPhone stuff. These other things would be whatever is sort of open on your screen. So yes, if you have those things open on your screen, those are going to be the different options it gives you. Okay, fantastic. All righty, sure. I'll play with that Tuesday. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So um, another component now that let's say you're you're working in your uh, class, you're able to give a presentation, talk over it as just like you would in class if you're used to giving lectures, um, you'd be able to, you know, uh, move the slides along, talk about it. Um, I also want to point out um, that uh, I and this will come up on a, a later slide, but I really want to also point out, especially for uh, conducting class that way, that it's really useful to have the chat uh, box open because um, students are going to be able to answer questions. And what I've also noticed is when they're having a connectivity problems, they're coming and going, it's reassuring to them to know that you're going to get that. So I'm going to mention that later, but it's kind of connected into all of this, and I didn't want to overlook that. And I have my chat box up now. If you actually wanted to insert a question rather than answering it uh, or ask me directly, but I don't. I don't think we have shy people here. I think we're all good to actually just ask the questions. So, so in terms of this, um, the breakout rooms. So this is essentially to put people in groups in Zoom. So in the classroom, of course, however you might do that, it might be random. It might be uh, groups that are already pre-assigned, whether through Canvas or because you say one, two, three, four, and you, you, know, you move them into uh, a group. So the next few slides are going to be about how to use this function. Um, and you know, it can take a little getting used to, but it, it's not hard to do. Uh, but as you'll see, manual groups take a little more time because you have to actually funnel people into the correct room. So that said, if you uh, were to click on the breakout room, and this is where you wouldn't be able to see that right now in our Zoom area because it's a function of being able to host it. But if you were, uh, if you've, if you have opened up another Zoom room, or when you go in to play around, and you are, uh, you will see a breakout room option. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to let you know what you're going to see once you're actually uh, in that. So in this case, as soon as you click on breakout rooms, you'll see this little, um, uh, uh, you know, reference here. Hang on just a second. There you are. Okay. Uh, and uh, you're going, you, it, this is what you'd see a sign. You don't have participants yet. And you, you, it's going to give you how many breakout rooms do you want? And then it also gives you, are you, do you just automatically want people to be funneled into break rooms? Or are you going to assign names to different break rooms? So those are the initial options that you're going to uh, get. Uh, then, uh, in this case, I decided to create five breakout rooms. And just for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to use manually because if you pick automatically, as students come in um, or when you hit kind of create breakout rooms, they're all, all automatically going to be funneled into these groups. They're called breakout rooms, um, but realize you can also change the title on them and I'll show you that. So first you would just have to decide how many groups 
and then whether you're going to just randomly assign them or whether you're going to assign them uh, manually. So manually takes a little more time, but that's the thread I'm running with here in terms of the uh, demonstration. Um, so first on the left, this one, uh, when you do open it, notice at the bottom of the break, the five breakout rooms that got created, there's a little window that says options, or it's a little arrow. When you click on that, these are the options in the lower left that you have. And so you can um, tell them to, you know, move into them automatically. Uh, but again, that's probably not what you want if you're doing it uh, manually. Um, then uh, you also have uh, this setup where you can uh, set up um, if someone wants to come back in, maybe there's a problem, maybe they have a question, maybe just something went wrong, um, you know, allowing them to come back to where you are, uh, to the main Zoom room. Uh, the breakout rooms, you can set it up to close automatically. So you, let's say you're going to give them 15 minutes to discuss whatever it is. You can set that up um, there for uh, 15 minutes. And then uh, it will also kind of keep track for you. That's a default. And then um, it'll give a countdown. And uh, so once that 15 minutes is up, you can change the amount here. But the default is 60 seconds that they'll let students know you've got 60 minutes to come back into the room or basically they're gonna come back in automatically. So just know that that's under options if you wanna set it up for a set time. You don't have to do that, but it can be useful where you're not having to think about how long have they been in there and, and things like that. The other part, the other little button there um, is that, uh, you know, on this side of it. And this is, you can, let's say you've created five uh, but you realize, oh, I really meant to create six. You can totally add a room. That's, that's not a problem. Uh, and again, you can, you know, update that too. So just know that, you know, once you've created something doesn't mean that, you know, it's there forever. You can adjust it even uh, as you're working on that as well. So two little kind of buttons at the bottom um, there. Uh, one is the options. And then one is the recreate if you want to maybe, oh, that's not what I meant to do. I want to recreate these breakout rooms or I want to add one, things like that. Um, questions about that part? So yeah, when you, when you add a new breakout room, do the people that are already assigned to a breakout room get moved? Well, realize that they're not moved until you click and funnel everyone into those rooms. So this oh. is more the setup part. Okay. So let's, yeah, so you set up four rooms, you realize, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. You can, you can change it as you're still um, setting things up. So until you hit the button and send them all to their rooms, <laughs> right. um, you, you can change uh, any and all of this. Okay. Yeah. Can, can, can I allow them to pick rooms so that they can work with people they want to work with? Man, I sure wish. I sure wish. Uh, that's not the way it's set up yet. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And I also wish there were a way, like, if, if I've already got students in rooms, I mean, in rooms, in groups, um, I really wish I could set these up before the session started. Because it does take some time to click everyone in, as I'll show you. Yeah. That said, these are the limits right now. Um, it's still very workable, but no is the short answer for that. Uh, okay, well, I tried, I, I tried manually, and it took a long time. Right. So I've not tried automatically yet. But let me, there's something else that's related to this, I, if I can come up with what I was trying to think of. Um, uh, it may be due that I, that it seems like, and I, I've taught mostly graduate students for 40, uh -huh. 48 years, 50 years. Nick is getting tired of hearing my story. But <laughs> I, so I'm trying to learn to teach undergraduates, and these guys don't talk like my graduate students yes. talk. So yes. I put them in a room with a reasonable amount of time, thinking, yeah. and some of them come back to the main room with much more. Okay. I, mean, they, I gave so, them a few minutes, they come back in five. Okay, are you familiar, like you can, um, uh, you can also join the break rooms. And I'm gonna- yeah, I figured out how to do yeah. that. But by yeah, the time so, I got one of my groups, they'd already come back to the main room. 
Yeah, no, uh, best way to do that is to set up here on the options. Um, you know, breakout rooms close automatically. Yes, they can come back. Um, but again, you can notice that the checkbox there, you can uncheck, allow participants to return to the main session at any time. That may or may not be useful in terms of what you're talking about, yeah. but especially in the situation we're in right now, I've actually found it useful to just get students in smaller groups. And if they end up not always talking about what, you know, the assignment is, I'm still finding that useful for them. Yeah. But that's more, that's more of a pedagogical, we're in this moment um, situation. So um, I'll, I'll go ahead with the other slides on the breakout room, but no, your, your point is well taken, although they okay. may end up being uh, talking about more than that. And you can adjust whether they're just allowed to come back into um, the main room. Okay, I'll look at that. Now, uh, another question related to this, mm -hmm. is there any way I can put people in a group? I'm calling them teams. I changed breakout to teams. Anyway, for a period of several meetings, so several class different times. Yeah, um, that's that's a good point. And again, it, it, it my understanding anyway, unless Nick knows a secret I, I don't hear, which is entirely possible, um, because you're not, it's not the same session, um, you would still need to redo the, the okay. breakout rooms manually. Okay, I'll just have to rethink how I'm doing things. Yeah, That's okay. no, it, it's one of those yeah. things, it's kind of like Blackboard or Canvas or whatever, you have to do it the way it allows for it, even if it's not what we want to do. Yeah. So another part of this then uh, has to do with, if you do, like you said, you prefer, and I agree, something like team, um, sometimes because uh, where I've used this a lot is, uh, student groups are have chosen current events. I, I list the current events, but they're creating self-selecting their own groups in Canvas. And so as a way to, uh, to um, make sure they're clear, because they're not just numbered, although now I'm going to start to number them given the breakout room thing. Uh, but you can also rename that and you would see the uh, as the rooms are created you can uh, click on that and you'd be able to rename it and it opens up a little thing for you to um, type in a new uh, term for it. Uh, if it turned out again, you've got too many, you can still delete the uh, room. So in terms of like the slide I had up, if, if uh, students were in groups and, and each group is assessing a particular chapter for something they're gonna present when we're come back together, I might just rename them to make it clearer uh, as well. Um, I'll add that's easier to do when it's automatically generated for the groups because otherwise you not only are having to load everyone in, but you're also having to rename the uh, room. So uh, there are some added le uh, levels and who knows, maybe Zoom will change some of this in the coming months uh, and year. Um, also a note though, let's say you've got a student that comes in a minute late or five minutes late or a half hour late, whatever it is, um, you can still assign them to a room. So if you click on uh, anything where it says assign, let's say uh, there's a new person in the room and you want to get them into breakout room one, you can just click on that and what you're going to see, and I wasn't able to do this because I was working alone here, uh, but as you know already, uh, Jeff, you would see the list of any unassigned names with a little yeah. checkbox next to it, and you can just assign them to whatever room you want, even if they're coming in late. So suddenly they're basically showing up in a room that maybe is already talking about something, uh, you know, uh, as well. But, um, you know, same thing then, they can still chat, they can still send um, information to you if they have a question. Um, they also, uh, again, it was a little hard for me to create this to show you, but just know they have a way to kind of raise their hand, um, let you know, put something in chat. So even if you're in another room with another group, or even if you're just, you know, trying to do something else while they're in groups, um, they still can be in touch with you. Yeah. Uh, and so though that's a useful component to know that they're not actually out there. I mean, you might have to remind them, but I've actually noticed students have been playing around with uh, some of the components there and, and having, I don't know if having fun with it is the right way, but, but word, but they're, you know, they're getting the uh, hang of it. So in terms of kind of the etiquette, um, just know that once you open all rooms, they'll get shuffled into their different uh, groups and you can always see the countdown clock. So you know how much time is left. You don't have to keep assessing that. 
and you can always click once the breakout rooms were sent, um, they're, they're divvied up and they're talking in their groups, then one of your options when you click on breakout rooms is to join. And you yeah. can pick whichever one you want to join. You then can leave. You can go to uh, another. I personally recommend when you do suddenly, you know, dive into their group that you announce yourself. Yes, you, they should see you. But, you know, sometimes they're talking about this, that, or the other. And I don't want to, you know, make them feel like suddenly I'm, you know, have sprung myself into their uh, world. But that's my own, uh, you know, personal uh, view of that as well. Um, and then uh, also uh, you can uh, verbally make an announcement. So there's a little button on the breakout room where it says uh, that you can, uh, uh, you know, like give an announcement to everyone and they'll hear it. So if you wanted to say, oh, I forgot to add, you're also supposed to address this question. You can either do that in chat, but you can also uh, click that and say what you uh, want to say. So Wait, then, you to say where that is again. Um, it's once you're already in, once you've already sent everyone to their groups, uh -huh. then one of the options on there that you have, it, and I can't remember the phrasing, but is basically to send all groups an announcement. Okay, like Good. a little bullhorn that you know you, it goes to everyone. I can. Um, Great, thank you. Yeah. And then um, again, the system will give all the rooms time to return. It'll let them know uh, the default is 60 seconds unless you set it up uh, you know, differently uh, as well. So you know, at this point, they're, they're back in the uh, uh, you know, room, oops, room with you there. So before I end the breakout room part, some of this, you know, I know and I've got a lot of the graphics up here and a lot of information. But basically know that, you know, depending on when I have only like 20 in the class, um, manually putting them into breakout rooms isn't that big of a deal. My first real glitch, unfortunately, my students were supportive and, and kind uh, and had a sense of humor, but I messed up by creating not one too few breakout rooms and suddenly there were people that weren't assigned. And that's, I have 60 students in that class. So that is, you know, a bit challenging. So yeah, uh, what you're talking about uh, or what you asked about in terms of, is there a way to sort of set it up in advance or use the same groups again and again? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, that's not yet possible, but given the volume of people using this now for these purposes, um, I wouldn't be surprised if some of that uh, changes. And Nick, you don't happen to know if there is something else that maybe you know, I'm not familiar with or something on that point. For, <clears throat> for setting up the groups? Yeah, I mean, there's no way to pre-set up the groups or... I think you can set them up, um, but you have to... I don't know if you can put people into them. Yeah, because they all have to be there, at least in the way Zoom works. It's, it's about the people that are in the room. Right. I thought I saw the other day. I can look into it and let you know. Yeah, if, if uh, there's something else, I know that would really be helpful. But um, yeah. and, and it's not visible in sort of these the basic options. And maybe there's an advanced and then an executive advanced where we might see that. <laughs> um, but anyway, we'll we'll be in touch about that. But yeah, that is one of the you know the the issues there. So. Um, again, as I mentioned, other things that you can tap into here, um, I, again, definitely recommend using chat. Um, and uh, if your little Zoom area is sort of condensed at the top or the bottom of the screen, um, you would find that under more. Uh, and so, you know, you can click on more, you can see the chat. There are other things there too. Uh, but just know that if it's not visible on your screen, um, you can oop, you can uh, huh, uh, you can see that there too. I've just found it really useful. That said, when you use screen share, it can feel like it's disappeared because suddenly it's there in a little box or attached to the uh, Zoom screen. And then when you go into screen share, it's not there. So that's when you have to click more and find um, chat there uh, because it's, it's, 
easy to find. It's just that it, it you know, when you shift the screen, it's not there. Um, so again, that can be useful. I've also found that useful um, that there are definitely students who may not want to speak up or who simply don't have um, good enough connectivity and sound that it's going to be garbled or cut in and out. And the chat has been really useful for students in those situations. So a thought there uh, as well. Um, another option is closed captioning. Um, I read something in the last week, you know, all of the helpful advice we're getting, and I think this was from DRC, uh, and totally understandable uh, for students who would need the closed captioning, uh, if they have um, hearing impediments, things like that. One of the suggestions was that, like, oh, a student could be assigned to do this. Um, Maybe in some situations that works, but I would not want to task a student with doing that. That said, um, when you do go into the closed captioning link, again, if you're hosting, you would see this. Um, you, these are the options that come up. Uh, and so you can assign someone who's in the room to type. So again, you can tell this is something that's geared more to a meeting rather than conducting a class with however many um, students. Uh, same thing on the I will type uh, component. Um, for some who use uh, third party services, again, and I, I'm not gonna get into the specifics there, but just know that um, increasingly there are ways to make this available. Uh, it doesn't always go smoothly, however. But again, just know that it's out there, that it's an option, and that uh, we're probably going to get better at using accessibility components um, you know, in, in time to come as well. And then the whiteboard. Um, so uh, first of all, on the right-hand side here, so I had shown you in that original uh, screen, when you go into screen share, one of the default options is the whiteboard. Uh, and again, then what you would see once you click on whiteboard and open it up uh, is you'd see, as you can tell kind of on the lower right, it's not too big, but hopefully you can see it. Um, you're going to get a whiteboard, you're going to get a white screen, and at the top, there are all of these little options. So like here, I, if you click on text, you're going to be able to type like I did there with the Enlightenment Ideals um, you know, question. If you want to draw for whatever reason, uh, and some people are really good with that, I'm not, uh, but again, it does give options. Um, and then there are the little, uh, it, when it says the stamp, there's a little check mark there, these things that you could just click on something. So you could put that on a student response or something. I'm not one that tends to go to that layer of the uh, frosting on the cake, but you know, some, some do. And then the one on the very uh, bottom uh, is the, uh, it's noted here as spotlight. So if you're on the whiteboard and you're using the spotlight, it, it functions basically as a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a pointer. Uh, and you can, so that people can see what it is you're pointing to. Um, let me pause here. Uh, Nick, this is the uh, pre-assigning participants. So there is a way to do it? Yeah, it looks like you can do it um, from your meetings beforehand. Um, but it looks like you need to know what... Um, what email address e email address is how you assign them it looks like so you need to know right you need to have like all their email all their asu email addresses and then you could upload that um using like a spreadsheet or manually put them in and set them up beforehand that way yeah um, which is, might not be actually less work than right. <laughs> funneling them in <laughs> manually that's good right, to know right. again you know, Zoom wasn't originally created for like a hundred people trying to be on it at once. So uh, it, it can do that. But I think too, some of that may smooth out in time. So at least it's available. Uh, and Nick put that link in chat. I don't know if everyone has their chat box open, um, but it is there and I'm sure he'd be willing to uh, forward that as well. So, um, you know, some people are really into the whiteboard component. Um, I will though note, um, students can, you know, and at times you can 
forbid this, but uh, students have access to their screen share. And this has been useful. Like I have a class where they give uh, presentations, nothing really fancy, but where, you know, they get to click on the screen share, they can bring up their PowerPoint slide. Um, and it not only allows them to develop some skills, um, but a way to actually share information among the group and to maybe facilitate people listening uh, to each other. Uh, and again, it wouldn't necessarily have to be a, a PowerPoint, but just know that that is there. That said, um, they also have access to Whiteboard. So, um, you know, and, and I haven't had any that have tried to misuse any of this, but I did have an accidental situation. I was teaching an OSHA class uh, for members of the community, you know, over 50, I think it is. And in the very first class, this was the first day Osher had gone to Zoom, I think on the 16th, first class for everyone. And I was going through slides and suddenly there was this black line across my <laughs> um, slide. And at the time I thought, you know, what's on my screen? And later, of course, I realized that just someone had, uh, you know, accidentally uh, done that initially, and I actually think it was the co-host. Uh, but just realize occasionally some oddities can happen uh, because more than one person might have access to you, uh, to uh, what you're doing. But again, I haven't had any real uh, problems. And then finally, um, just realize, and I'm sure you've been in them already, but your needs or your awareness may change over time. And so, you know, make sure that you go in and look at your own Zoom settings, uh, what the defaults are. Again, it might be something like, yes, I want it to start recording as soon as I open it. Uh, or you want to allow uh, other members when you're hosting, you want to allow other members to do this, but not that all sorts of things. So these are things where uh, you do have some control, at least when you're the host and you are the host as the instructor. Uh, so just uh, again, a reminder that the defaults that you prefer will probably change over time, um, just as you get familiar or you start using different uh, components uh, as well. So uh, I'm gonna go out of my screen share here, although I'm happy to go back to it uh, if, if there's something I need to reference here. So other questions or comments or maybe something I, I didn't touch on every single thing, but hopefully that's a bit of help. Actually, it's been very, very helpful. I've, I've been feeling like a, um, a paper, wallpaper hanger with one arm uh, <laughs> trying to, so I, st I actually avoided the chat because I don't multitask anyway, and I figured that's another thing. But my students got onto it. So they started chatting, and now I, and then the next time I met with them, I said, look, at, I can read your chats because it's recorded. So if you're saying anything about me and you don't want me to know it, just shut up. Don't chat on it because I can read it. Somebody in class apparently was sleeping and snored. They could hear it. So they were having this long conversation about this student sleeping and snoring. And then, well, we don't want to be mean, you know? Who is it? Right. You know? <laughs> no, I actually, uh, you may be familiar, like if you, as the host, if I put my cursor over, uh, you know, even my own, but anyone's image, I can mute or unmute. So, you know, if someone's muted, I can go, I'll go ahead and, and uh, use here, uh, Dr. Cook, if I unmute you, whoop, maybe I can't, oh wait, I may not be able to do that because I'm not officially the, yeah, unmute audio. Uh, and it's actually not, I think that's because Nick is the uh, host. He's the host. Yeah. yeah, but just know that like, you know, I had a student yesterday who was on video and I, he was, had actually been rather engaged, but he and his brother share an apartment. They're both in my class, two of my classes actually. And so I had a guy that was visible on his screen, we're working with a book and another guy who'd had his book on, he was laying down on the couch, but has his computer position so that he was in it. I wasn't going to razz the guy, but at some point I swear it looked like he had just fallen asleep. And so at one point I muted the video. I guess I did end up unmuting you. It just takes a lag there. Uh, so I did actually uh, unmute you and I'll put you back on uh, mute. Yeah, 
so, you know, I went ahead and muted the video just because it was really visually distracting. Uh, and then suddenly out of the blue, I'm hearing him talking and engaging in the conversation again. So just know that you can mute uh, video or audio as you're teaching. Although again, I haven't tended to have trouble, except occasionally someone doesn't realize they've come unmuted. Uh, and, uh, you know, suddenly they're sneezing or they're saying, hey, I'm in class, you know, <laughs> and you're, you're in the middle of that. So you, you can tell them, but it, you can also just take care of the problem yourself. But, you, but you're right about the multitasking. It's a lot. And even in the breakout rooms, plus the chat, plus the screen sharing, you know, take it slow, do what you need to do. But as you get more comfortable with one aspect or it becomes more second nature, then you know you can add one thing or add another thing and not all classes need all components uh, i don't use group every time groups every time anyway so yeah. i don't know some thoughts any other questions or comments this is just a uh, more of a pedagogical question but how many people do you usually put into groups um, I give them what I tend to have them talking about. I don't, I prefer them not to be more than six and I actually prefer four to five. Um, and that, that's kind of pedagogically how, what works or what I've read also. Uh, but that has more to do just with, you don't want so few that if someone doesn't show up or it, you know, doesn't engage or gets, is coming in and out in this camp context, coming in and out of Zoom that you don't have anyone. But if they get too many, if you're really wanting them to talk about something, you know, eight people trying to have 15 minutes, that's not a lot of time that each of them has. Or, I mean, of course, you could extend that out, but even more classroom management is different in Zoom than it is when they're all sitting there in front of you. Um, so that, that's my own um, take on that. But, you know, it, it really does depend. Plus, honestly, just fewer move, moving parts kind of like a group project more generally. I, I'm not a huge fan of group projects, but I, I use them, but I try and keep them um, limited and also uh, individual points rather than a collective uh, grade. But again, that's my own pedagogy. So others clearly would disagree. Great, great, thanks. Yeah, sure. Anyone else? Well, again, um, I'd be happy to send along what I had, uh, no requirement, but if you want to email me, it's just Pamela.Stewart at ASU.edu, or Nick could uh, forward that along as, as well. I'd be happy to share those. Clearly now, these are not ASU official PowerPoints. There's no logos. There's the colors are wrong, you know, so I'm sure I could take flack. But uh, again, if it, I, but I think what you're seeing is that it is the time we need to kind of get into this. And unfortunately, we haven't had the time. Uh, in some ways, that's probably useful because we just had to do it. It's not like, oh yeah, when I get time six weeks from now, I'll finally figure out Zoom because we know how that tends to go. On the other hand, we're gonna be learning as we go. And, um, you know, we've been on a really intense learning curve across the board. Um, so, so going back to where I started and I'll wrap that up, uh, you know, again, if what you're doing is recording things for students to use in their own time, in their own way, async, uh, in, uh, without it being synchronous, I'd use the screencast option. If you're working face to face or with students or meeting with students and you want to use screen share, use some of the other options, um, you know, Zoom is a good way to go. So anything I, else? I, yeah, you I, had, I tried to get up a TED talk when I first started this and I couldn't, I couldn't do anything with it. Do I have to go through, um, what's that, VCS or what is that? Oh, no. no. Not, nothing that's um, digital or like streaming from a website, whether that's the ASU library uh, films, whether it's a TED talk, if you're pulling it in from a, a website, like with a TED, TED talk, I just recommend you have it that like if you're in Google Chrome that you have that uh, component up on your desktop. So then what you would do is when you go to screen share, you're going to select your Google Chrome or whatever, and then you can directly play it from there. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. 
Great. Yeah, uh, I, no, the, the DVD reference was, again, an oddity of my world, but um, there wasn't another option, but I had the DVD in my possession. And when I tried to play it just with the default DVD player, it wasn't showing up on the screen for students. I could see it. My yeah. students couldn't see it. So uh, fortunately, Nick helped me uh, find the light. And uh, it's, it's the VLC option, the one that has the little orange and white cone that sometimes we see in the bottom of our screen, or we, we tend to have it in our, uh, uh, you know, options in, in our computers. Um, so no, that was just a, uh, if you actually are trying to slide a DVD in and play it, and yet you're seeing it on your screen, why doesn't my screen share work? That was just the oddity of that. But if you're pulling it up from online, just pick that option um, when you go into your screen share and then you can expand it. Like if, if you want to, you know, you're going to click go and you're going to expand it. it. It'll fill the screen and it'll work just like it would if you were doing it in a classroom. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Now when I, I, I learned some of these little icon things and I taught, I went through with my students to use them and the students asked me a question. And when they did, her hand came up, a little icon on her hand yes. and her name. I thought that yes. was the greatest thing. And yes. I want to try some and tell me what you see. Because I don't see what you, you know, I yeah. just, yeah. I just gave you, uh, wait a minute. Yep. You gave yep. me a thumbs up. Yes, okay. exactly. And? Yep, exactly. And okay. there's also, again, in nobody the. Nobody else saw that, right? Except yeah. I see it on mine. I see the yeah. hand clap on mine. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And actually that I was, I think I might have used that example the other day um, in my class where they do these little mini presentations and the ones that had, you know, when we're in the classroom, everyone claps afterwards. Um, and so now we're in this, we're in this world. And of course, a lot of students have their themselves um, audibly muted. And so, you know, suddenly all the little hand claps are going up because they figured out, you know, how to use them and stuff. There's also a hand raise option. Yes. Um, and again, that's not on the host side. Uh, but again, similarly, uh, I've got a student that will do that. It's really interesting. She's, she's a great student, but it's like, I'm fine if she just starts talking. And, yeah. and yet, you know, she's like raising her hand. So yeah. I think some of it too, like some of them have learned how to go into their profile in Zoom, put a yeah. photo on, whether it's a photo of their dog or a letter or yeah. whatever, and, you know, individualize it uh, a, a bit too. So that when, like if I turned off my um, video, my photo would still be up there. That's yes, exactly, Nick, thank yeah. you. <laughs> it looks just like you, man, totally. So. Yeah. So, you know, things like that, that I was happy to see because that meant students were taking the time or at least discovering, you know, while I'm talking or while we're doing things, they're in there going, I wonder what this is. And, you know, that's useful. Now that said, since you mentioned the chat, um, you know, there is a way for you to, anyone actually, to just send a message to one. But like you said, we have the chat record um, and uh, again, some of the defaults you can set up to always have that chat record saved in a certain location. Um, you may not want to or need to, but just know again, those are in some of the defaults associated with um, Zoom settings as well. So. Do you know if there is a way, I know this is a list of the participants as they come in when you, I don't know how to get to it right this minute, but is there some way to save that so there that is. I have a record of who was there and who wasn't there? Yeah, there is actually, um, honestly, what I've taken to doing, uh, because it either takes me time at the very beginning class or it takes me time later. So I go with the beginning of class, I pull up the role in uh, Canvas. And as they're coming in, I always appreciate those students who come in a little early so that I don't have everyone coming in at the same moment. Yeah. And I'm just doing the attendance because I actually take attendance. Um, I'm doing attendance uh, as they come in, and then I also go back and double check in case we had latecomers. Uh, but yes, uh, there is a way to do that in terms of saving your records, I think it's called, Nick. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but it is in your, in your Zoom settings. Like if you're in your Zoom settings, you have all kinds of reports and things that you can pull even outside of the Zoom. Um, Outside and also, I didn't use it, um, but there's a poll, a you, way to do polls. I didn't show you that, 
Yeah. Uh, but again, and part of that's because, again, uh, I, I was actually going to pull one up, uh, but I don't think I have that option because of my uh, status. Nick, Nick, uh, one of you, Nicholas or, or Pamela, how do you get to Zoom settings? That's from, um, it depends how you've got it set up, but basically you go to the ASU Zoom site. Like if you, uh, what I had at the very beginning, um, just a second here, let me just pull that up here. Um, oops, sorry. Here, so in mm -hmm. your My ASU, um, and you go to view more and then into Zoom. So like you were saying, you're used to just clicking on your own link for your own classes or clicking on a link from an invitation. But to make sure that, and again, because you may want to go back and review them every once in a while, um, this, is, this is the default instructions I use. There are other ways to get there, especially if you have the little icon down at the bottom that where you're using Zoom. But it's in my ASU. You just click on View More instead of Canvas or all the other options. And then within there, you scroll, you can see down lower is um, Zoom. And um, you might need to log in if you're not already in your ASU. Uh, and then, uh, you know, th this is uh, the other instructions on here were geared to today. But that's where you can find it. It's in my ASU under View More, and then you pick Zoom. Good. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, anything else? Nick, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, I was just gonna circle back real quick, Jeff, to the screen sharing clips. Uh -huh. You were talking about like the TED Talks. So when you actually share your screen, um, it's exactly like um, Pam described. Uh, you pull it up, you click the browser that it's in. Um, but there's also a couple of check boxes at the bottom of your share screen. Um, and one of them is to share computer sound. Um, and so that's how you can share the actual sound from the clip so that the students get the sound. Um, and then there's also an optimized screen sharing for video clip. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think, I'm not 100% sure what that does, but it, it makes it easier for, the, for Zoom to handle the video clip sharing. I'll also say, um, like when I'm on my desktop at ASU, um, and when you do click those, you'll also have to sign in for your computer like, you know, almost like a something, an, an additional thing. Um, but uh, I haven't had any trouble uh, showing anything or with sound um, there. I don't, I haven't, other than like what I'm doing here, and I don't know how this is sounding or looking to others, uh, and I didn't share a, a video clip, but uh, I might be more inclined to do that uh, here. But yeah, it just, sometimes it just depends on, you know, what works. So I just want to say, I haven't had any problems not doing that, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that maybe it might be better uh, if we do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Any last minute questions? Otherwise, uh, again, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, notice in the chat, Jeff, that Nick added not only the link, um, for uh, the pre-assigning participants, which I'm going to get more familiar with, although I have a feeling it's, it, it would still take me about the same amount of time as, yeah. as what I'm doing. Um, but then also, again, the, uh, the ASU link, um, if you just want to go there directly, asu.zoom.us. So that, too, will get you to the, uh, your, own, you know, your page and then where you can assess all of the, the defaults you want to have mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. Is there any way on this stuff that's on the chat that I can save that uh, on my once it closes, once the meeting stops, it goes away, doesn't it? I, if I were you, I would just take your cursor and click on those two links now. Yeah. And that way it'll come up in your own, um, you know, browser. And then that way you can follow up with those links or mark those pages or whatever you want to uh, do with those. So, so you're, uh, Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Um, if you click on services, you can then it'll open up another box that says open URL and yep. then it'll take you right there. Okay. I mean, you have to, I guess I'd say right click on it and then <laughs> um, right click or double click, depending on your computer, you go to services and then there's an open a URL. So you could open those directly from your screen if you want. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got, I got them up. 
All right. Good job, man. See? Oh, All right. Hey, Anything thanks else? very much. I'm going to leave the meeting now. Yeah, we're good, good to go. Everybody. Thanks so much, Nick. Appreciate it. Yeah, good seeing you, you again, too. Thank you.